Bossy, good morning. Bless up your whole cells. It's another day to have a good day. Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. Thank you so very much for tuning in to Good Morning Grenada. Always a pleasure. Thank you for your listenership, your viewership, and your time. Thank you for starting your day off with us here at the GBN. Appreciate it to the fullest. Hope you and trust that you had a restful and peaceful Thursday evening and night. And you're ready to get Wednesday up and running. Thank you to those of you joining us on the GBN, Grenada Broadcasting Network's Facebook page, the Grenada Broadcasting Network's YouTube channel, the website www.gbn.gd, GBN TV channel 7, 11 and 20, and good morning to the listeners of Classic 105.5, 105.9, and all the folks joining us on Party Grenada and Go to Fet Facebook pages. Always a pleasure to have you. All the viewers and listeners joining us across the Caribbean, which Whatever part of the region you are, far north as Jamaica, far south as Guyana, far south west as the ABC Islands and far northeast as Barbados, all the islands in between, a spicy Grenadian 473 morning to each and every one of you. It is a pleasure. Hope you're having a good, blessed, sunshiny weather that I was seeing coming into the studio. Again, coming into the studio, which was just a little less than an hour ago, there was... The sun was rising. There was no signs of rain clouds. I don't know if the weather has changed by now, but from just less than an hour ago, the sun was shining over the Himalayas and coming up. So hopefully it's beautiful weather for all the Caribbean islands. Uh, the folks in Guyana, I know you're going through it uh, as we speak over the past it's been about two days now, um, heavy showers. Remember the tropical wave that I told you all to, uh, we may experience the outskirts of and was passing just south east of Trinidad? Well, it brought heavy showers to Guyana and Guyana, um, parts of Guyana at least, are flooded. Flooded to the point of water is, uh, is as high as roofs in Guyana. It is a devastating situation down there. Um, so those of you joining us from Guyana, those of you Guyanese nationals in different islands, different parts of the world, uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Just a few weeks ago it was St. Vincent and now we have to uh, think about our brothers and sisters, our neighbors in Guyana as they go through this time. I'm telling you it is tough down there um, to the point where as the uh, floodwaters recede in some places, or subside in some places, uh, they're starting to see big snakes wrapped around trees and wrapped around um, steps and the Tinko Konyos in Guyana. So Guyana, my thoughts, my prayers go out to you and I'm sure once relief, um, once you tell us what you need, we will definitely um, come to your help and come to your aid and in the meantime we're going to continue to pray for you and continue to pray for your recovery for those of you in Guyana um, those of you who have the facilities to do so feel free to google it just a quick search of Guyana flood June 2021 and you can see some of the pictures they're available on social media and of course uh, other websites and you can definitely see the devastation going on down there so again Guyana Thoughts and prayers are with you. And all the viewers joining us internationally, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Hope you will have a good day, are having a good day, have had a good day. Bless up all your whole selves. Let's get right into this morning's word of the day. I love the song. All right. This morning's word of the day is hebdomadal. Hebdominal. It is an adjective which means taking place, coming together, or published once every seven days or weekly. Hebdomadal. It's spelled H-E-B-D-O-M-A-D-A-L. Hebdomadal. Hebdomadal, occurring or publishing every seven days or a weekly publication, comes via the late Latin adjective which means weekly and comes from the Greek word a group of seven or a seven-day cycle, a week or a fever recurring every seven days. It is a derivative of the adjective which means seventh, a complicated but regular derivative of the cardinal number seven. Hebdomadal entered English in the first half of the 17th century. That's the word of the day this morning. Hebdomadal, H-E-B-D-O-M-A-D-A-L. It's an adjective which means taking place, coming together, or published once every seven days or weekly. A.K.A. Um, our newspapers come out once a week, every seven days. So it's hebdomadal. 
Um, an example of the use of the word, 36 years has passed since and still he remembered the Sunday evening, the hebdomadal get together of his parents' circle of friends. Another example of the use of the word, it was the hebdomadal treat to which we all looked forward from Sabbath to Sabbath. That's the word of the day this morning, hebdomadal, H-E-B-D-O-M-A-D-A-L, an adjective which means taking place, coming together, or published once every seven days or weekly, aka our newspapers are hebdomadal. Yes, hebdomadal, every seven days. That's the word of the day this morning. And the thought of today for today, June 2nd, 2021, is... Today, I promise not to stress over things I cannot control. Amen. Today, I promise to not stress over things I cannot control. We take on a lot of stress that we, we, we have to. If you can't control it, why stress over it? It's going to happen one way or the other. It's going to give you the result, whether that's the result you want or not. It's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. So why stress? Just let it happen. Stop stressing and taking on things. We just, we does, hold on, bad English. We just take on things that we don't need to take on. We stress over things, unfortunately, take out years of our lives, spoil our days, and when we could be enjoying the moments, and we stress over it, especially the things that we cannot control. Try not to do that today. Today of all days, June 2nd, 2021, try it especially today. Don't stress over things you cannot control. It's going to happen one way or the other. It's going to give a result one way or the other. There is nothing you can do about it. So just relax yourself. Set up yourself. Set up your stage, my lord. Take your time. Calm down. Just let it happen. Once you cannot control its outcome, no stress. So today I promise to not stress over things I cannot control. That's my wish and hope for each and every one of us today. All right. Okay, let's see. Uh, quickly, let's see what we can share. Let, let me tell you what... Um, what's celebrated today disclaimer is not me is a celebration is not blossom that say is what's celebrated today today june 2nd hi <laughs> it is leave the office early day leave the office early day wait pause that does not mean run away from the people job that is not what it means this day is specifically for the people who work who often work more than 40 hours each week we have people who stick to the 8 to 4. As soon as 5 minutes to 4, they're starting to put on the makeup and pack the bags and head on out the door 4 o'clock. But then there are others who stay back 5 and 6 o'clock and they're not going home. That's more than 40, 40 hours a week outside of the usual. That's what it's for. The day is really to let you know that you need to get back into the groove of things and take care of you. Working over 40 hours a week, it's very stressful, it's tiring, and this is an opportunity for you to stick to the plan. Stick to the eight-hour uh, work day that has been um, established in your agreement. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, so that's what today is. For those of you who work more than 40 hours each week, not those of you who run away and take hour and a half lunch and Lead, want to lead the people work three o'clock new no. that is to stick to the eight hour a day job that's what it is okay so it's a leave the office early day so those of you who usually stay back until after sunset and you're in the office before sunrise this day is specifically for you not any and everybody set up all yourself don't try to time me up all right um, and that is all that we have time to share this morning as we get ready for the morning edition of news for those of you on radio and those of you on our visual platforms. It's time for the repeat of last evening's newscast. Stick and stay. Good morning, Grenada. Coming back in a short shot. And when we come back, we're heading up to the sister isles of Karaku and PT Martinique. It's good morning, Karaku, when we come back. Stick and stay. We'll be back. Understanding our ocean is education for life. Encourage your students to learn about marine life, water quality, sea level rise. 
Let them explore sciences. Encourage them through field trips and scholarships. The more they know, the better they can protect our oceans from litter and climate change. Let them rise to the challenge. The ocean is our responsibility. Their inheritance, their future. This message brought to you by the OECS Commission with funding from the Government of Norway. Remlet, tackling ocean pollution from turf to surf. not out. It's been hard, but we've persevered together. We each have a role in Grenada's successful recovery, nourishing our families, guiding our children, caring for our communities, energizing our lives. We are strong. Together, we are Grenada. Officials and officers of the Royal Grenada Police Force are on red alert as the search is on for a Grenadian national who authorities claim re-entered the country illegally and is still at large. The general public is now being called on to assist in locating him. Rena Peer Thomas tells us more. Members of the Royal Grenada Police Force are on a manhunt for Grenadian national Jimmy Braveboy, who resided on the island of Trinidad, who allegedly re-entered the country illegally on Saturday. A report issued by police says Braveboy, a resident of New Hampshire, St. George, recently entered the island of Pitimatnik via a fishing vessel. He later traveled via the Osprey Line to mainland Grenada and failed to adhere to quarantining procedures on entry into the country. Minister for Health Nicholas Steele made the announcement on Tuesday during government weekly post-cabinet briefing. He is, or his family is from the New Hampshire area, he is still at large and we're asking um, individuals who may have information to come forward to the next police station or health center. The individual apparently came in on Saturday from the information we have uh, by a, via a vessel or speedboat to Karakou then to Grenada. Steele says Grenada continue to see a growth in the number of persons entering the country illegally, a risky practice that can result in a massive COVID-19 outbreak. We are constantly at threat. Individuals are constantly trying to circumnavigate and get around the various restrictions that we put in place to keep us safe and them safe. But still, some individuals try to, to breach it or, or, or believe that they are above it. So it, we are constantly at risk. Someone successfully came into Grenada illegally from a country where there is right now a significant outbreak of COVID-19. Though the information surrounding the individual is still vague, the minister explains that more information will be made public by the RGPF when it comes at hand. It is with respect to the name and, and pictures, and so I leave that to the RGPF to do as, as, as they proceed because the, the tip-off came through the RGPF. We have been informed because, as always in these instances, there is a, 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 a medical risk or medical situation, epidemiological risk here and therefore the CMO and his team are on alert. Meanwhile, in an unrelated matter, the authorities is also addressing an instance where a Grenada national with U.S. citizenship came to Grenada with a document with an alleged forged date of his vaccination in order to qualify for the two days quarantine protocol. It's a male uh, individual who has Grenadian as well as U.S. citizenship. And when he came in, he forged the date, uh, or we, we know for a fact that he forged the date 
uh, at which he got vaccinated in order to qualify for the 48 hour uh, quarantine period and we are investigating as to whether he forged the entire document or not that person is is uh, in quarantine a bill to amend the Immigration Act, Cap 145, was passed in the House of Representatives last Friday and goes before the Senate on Wednesday to increase the maximum penalty for illegal immigration and expand the ambit of offenses. An increase from ten to $12,000 is the proposed change as the penalty for individuals who refuse to give information or fail to comply with any requests under the Act and knowingly falsifies information. These individuals include any captain of a vessel, crew member, or passenger. For GBN News, I am Rena Pear Thomas reporting. Interesting times. Government is introducing identification cards for people who take the COVID-19 vaccine. Rena Pear tells us more. Grenadians who are fully vaccinated will soon be able to attend events at the National Stadium and other venues to watch football and cricket matches freely without the use of masks. In addition, those fully vaccinated will soon have an identification card in addition to their vaccination card to be used for entering events or travel. Minister for Health Nicholas Steele made the announcement on Tuesday. We are looking at a pilot late uh, this week uh, between today and the end of the week to launch a pilot where we would have a picture ID vaccination card for those who choose to get one. Um, it is not uh, mandatory, but it really will facilitate uh, individuals who want to go to fully vaccinated events. Uh, so the pilot will start later on this week. Uh, when we are ready for that, we will make that announcement. So members of the public who are fully vaccinated can come forward to a designated location to receive a picture vaccination ID that will allow them or, or, or aid in, in, in them being able to get access to fully vaccinated events as well as it will aid in the traveling um, uh, should they need to prove wherever they're going to that they're fully vaccinated. Minister still explains that there are measures in place for vaccination verification for persons who may try to forge vaccination cards. There will be additional verification that we have because we have a database of all persons who have been vaccinated just in case somebody attempts to forge a vaccination card and we are also looking at um, and, and hopefully within the next day or two to be able to roll out additional forms of vaccine verification. These new measures are being rolled out as Grenada prepares to host the T20 cricket matches scheduled for June 26th between West Indies and South Africa. Five T20s are expected to be played at the National Stadium. For the events coming up, because all those who will be entering are fully vaccinated and therefore not at risk, uh, therefore, individuals would be expected to be able to move around freely um, and quite likely if they so chose not to wear the mask. We still recommend that you do um, because you're only going to be in that event for a couple of hours. Um, so that is why it is still recommended, but uh, individuals at those events can feel safe that they are among other persons or all other persons around them are fully vaccinated. For GBN News, I am Rena Pear Thomas reporting. Police have investigated and charged one of their own, Kenny Harry, a corporal of police, for the alleged offense of grievous harm. The arrest was made by officers attached to the Criminal Investigation Department on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021, following reports of an alleged incident between Harry and a resident of Pearl St. Andrew that occurred on February 13th, 2021. He was granted bail in the amount of $10,000 thousand dollars with one surety. Harry was suspended from active duty in the Royal Grenada Police Force. The future of the Florida government school remains questionable as the school population is set to decrease as students who sat the 2021 CPEA examinations seek placements in secondary schools and registration of new students still pending. Details in this report. 
They offers that the present situation at the Florida government school may lead to a permanent closure of the institution. PTA President Annette Welsh McKenzie says with students soon exiting and registration of new ones on hold, the future of the institution is questioned. I'm coming up, right? Now it's time for intake, new intake. CPA students going out, so they did not start re um, re registering. That is a big, big problem. Parents would not want to come and you understand where, where, where they put, you putting them. We for now have no. We don't know what will happen in September. School is about to close, and we do not know where the students going to be for September. If it goes still going to be that makeshift, we don't know. Parents are threatening to transfer their children. The school population already small, so if parents transfer their children, no new intake. What will happen to further government school? Some parents are threatening to find a new placement for their children if the present situation does not improve. Walking on it and I haven't seen any work going on. Dropping my child morning, coming back evening and I kept asking her, um, if she observed anything and then she said no mommy nothing has been done on the school anything doesn't change I will relocate her I will and I would have to for her safety Thanks. one parent who had her children moved from another school to the Florida government school says she has seen improvement in her children's grades she says the teachers do their best and would like government to step up to the plate for the children's sake. Coming here since, well, there was an Anakin force and I took them out. They've been coming here since, since 2018. They've been coming here and like, I see the improvement. I see the improvement with the nine-year-old. I see the improvement with the seven-year-old now. It's not fair, you know, because the children miss it school. Sometimes the whole week they're home. They're getting three days of, three days of the week school. And sometimes they don't get at all. And it's, it's not nice for the children, neither for the teachers, because the teacher is interested in, in um, having the children around, but the, the, the condition of the school, it's not fair. So they need some repairs and whatsoever have to be done, whosoever have to come to help them solve the problem. It will be great for them. What is in train for the institution? Well, this will have to be answered by those in authority. GBN contacted the Minister for Education, Mrs. Emmeline Pear, on Monday for a comment regarding the situation at the Florida Government School. However, our reporter was asked to speak with the Chief Education Officer, Ms. Angela Finley, instead. Our news desk was told that at the time, the CEO was at a meeting and will return a call. This did not happen. Attempts were made again on Tuesday. However, up to news time, all attempts were unsuccessful. Chris Lena John, GBN News. The Grenada United Labour Party is seemingly making a return to politics amidst an intense industrial climate, a pandemic and the pending birth of a new political party. Jared Joseph tells us who is taking up the challenge. The son of the late Hubert Pridom, who was deputy political leader of the Grenada United Labour Party and deputy prime minister under Sir Eric Matthew Gary, is making a return from political asylum. Jeffrey Pridom, who was arrested and released with his father in the 1979 coup before seeking asylum in New York, is preparing to return from exile to Grenada. His homecoming is geared directly at a return to politics, as he says GULP has been rebuilding for the last 15 months. Um, both my parents died a week apart and we did, uh, uh, I did the eulogy for my parents and following that I met with quite a few people who encouraged me to come back. I did promise my dad that when I can I would because I am passionate about politics and my passion must drive my purpose. So I'm at the point where uh, we are rebuilding the JLP as a purpose-driven grassroots organization, which it is. Why now is the question being asked about the resurgence of GULP. Freedom, who has assumed the role of political leader in response notes, the Labour Party's historical importance to Grenada. And if you reflect back, this year we're celebrating 70 years of the GULP democratic successful revolution of 1951. And what did we achieve by that? We got the eight hour workday. Additionally, they got back pay 
historically, the people worked for the same wages in 1850 that they worked for in 1950. So we got an increase in wages, they got sick pay, and we got the water standpipe. So it was the beginning of the socioeconomic revolution in Grenada. He believes the party still has a role to play in the future of Grenada and its development. Pridom says they are securing their political base, which he says already exists, and will then build upon that base. Our second strategic pillar is justice. And you're talking about food security, you're talking about socioeconomic justice whether it's environmental justice, etc. And then our last segment, where it impacts our young people, is development. So we, our three strategic pillars, again, is independence, justice, and development. And within the development, we want to make Grenada an entre entrepreneurial society. How are we going to do that? We're going to break it down into all the economic sectors and look to see where we can monetize it and to build out the capacity to see where we can, we can have economic activity, because it's all about economic activities and productivity. And when you think of the Grenada United Labour Party, I want to make sure that all Grenadians, after tonight, think of the Grenada United Labour Party as a party that will come back and provide economic opportunity and social justice for all. GULP is one of the oldest existing political parties, with the late Sir Eric Matthew Gary creating history after becoming Grenada's first Prime Minister. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. Meanwhile, a current mainstay in the political spectrum, the National Democratic Congress, is also preparing for the next general elections due in 2023. However, there are more opponents with the return of GULP and the birth of TGM. The lingering doubts as to NDC being a coherent, well-organized opposition were also addressed during Monday's Beyond the Headlines program. NDC caretaker for St. Patrick West, Joseph Andal, welcomes the emergence of political forces, citing that the market is open to people involving themselves in politics. We believe that more people ought to become involved at different levels. It is not the exclusive reserve of the New National Party or the National Democratic Congress. And there may come a time when, well, there will come a time when all political parties will have to face the public via the ballot box and the people will then speak and then we'll see who is standing where. Andal, however, believes many Grenadians have secluded themselves for matters of national importance, especially if there is a political interest. He adds that NDC has continuously expressed their opinions on national issues. However, their reach on the social media platforms is reportedly missed by some citizens. Andal says the NDC therefore has launched a number of initiatives to include the those individuals who are dubbed out of the loop on national issues. Recently, we have started doing our Touchdown Sundays, where we go to a different community on specific Sundays. Our members fan out across the community. We engage the people. We feel the pulse. We share our ideas with them. We listen to their ideas, their criticisms, their questions, and so on. We engage everyone. We try to knock on every single door. The NDC caretaker also addressed people's concerns of the continued backbiting and criticism of the current administration by the NDC rather than providing its plans for Grenada. We must not be naive. Politics is a competitive venture. And a political party in, in opposition has an almost sacred obligation to point out the shortcomings, the failures, and the wrongdoings of the incumbent administration. Failure to do that will amount to a dereliction of duty. The, the important thing is finding the right balance between criticizing and highlighting shortcomings and pushing forward your own plans, your own policy, your own agenda. He says the NDC is listening to the people and adapting where necessary. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. 
unconventional, non-traditional jobs were the backdrops of a career day held at the McDonald College on Tuesday. The career day featured individuals in the entertainment industry who provided the students with guidance on how the field of entertainment is multifaceted. Whenever the question, what would you like to be when you grew up, is asked, the most common of answers are doctors, lawyers, police officers, and other prominent career options. With the desire to broaden the minds of students into thinking outside the box, Chantelle Maguire, an actuary by profession, hosted a series of career days geared towards broadening the occupational scope for young people. Maguire said lack of opportunity has been the biggest deterrent against non-traditional jobs in Grenada. I have a very non-traditional career so it kind of is what inspired me to do this initiative when I first came back of three years now I've been in and out of Grenada and I had a little business a little gym and I was interacting with a young a lot of younger folks like straight out of high school uh, straight out of time CC and one thing I realized from the, um, interacting with these folks in my business is that it seemed as if they didn't think they had much opportunities and they were very smart individuals you know and um, I was very impressed by some of their work ethic but it's they really felt as though they couldn't do anything. When I would like, give them options of what they could do, they never even thought of it. So I realized that there was a lack of exposure to different type of career paths in Grenada. Yvette Nicole Scher, co-founder and executive vice president of Scher Media Group and longtime publicist for Beyonce, implored upon the students to focus on the bigger picture when choosing a career path. Using a live example, she showed them how connections can be made to the jobs they desire. So Vaughn... Vaughn comes and he creates a great song and he's about to send the song out but he needs a little help getting it out of Grenada. He needs a little help with the rest of the world but he also needs a little help through Grenada media. So Vaughn needs someone like me, a publicist, right? So we have our plan. We got the content creator, they did the photos, they did the video. Now I leave Vaughn and I am knocking on her door. Like, hi. And I send her his music. I talk to her. I said, I think you should interview Vaughn. You should do a piece on Vaughn. That piece gets multiplied on social media. You take it, you share it. The girl in China sees it. The girl in Africa sees it. The principal and students were appreciative of the session, adding that it was a breath of fresh air to the traditional career day that's normally held. To me, it's a, it's a wonderful initiative. You know, it takes us away from the, the traditional curriculum because personally, my po perspective on education is that each and every child has some talent, some skill, some inability within them. And I think it's time for us to get away from the, the conventional occupations. So I think it's a wonderful initiative and I would always support it. Before this opportunity, I thought Marabia, Kikita, playing for Grenada or something. So today made you think differently? Yeah, because I see where you're traveling, where you're going, what you're doing, how much money you're making, and I like that. What I learned from it most is goals. Achieve, achieve anything in life you want. For GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalance hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753. To find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment, visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health.
Start Ultra Tech Gasoline and Diesel. Available only at Rubis Stations. Trends come and go, but jewelry is forever in style. Give a gift that lasts a lifetime. Diamond Intercontinental have diamond jewelry, gold and silver jewelries, engagement rings, wedding bands, chains, bracelets, and so much more. They also carry brands such as Anne Klein and Guess. Why wait? Visit Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store at the Esplanade Mall. Call 440-231234. The number again, 232-1234. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalance hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox your way to health We are taking pride in outstanding performance We are encouraging and recognizing innovation We are committed to continuously doing things better with enhanced services coming soon. Yes, we are here for you. Check us out today for your financial need. GUT Credit Union, it's where you belong. How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Boy, in line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as the house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016. Or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks, they go draw your plan, they go talk your materials. <laughs> hey man, where you going? The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. Raise it high up the ladder, let we set it on fire. Hey. Let me go never vex. Never vex? Yeah. Yeah, let me go. Ah. You go never vex? Never vex. <laughs> What, man? Yeah, yeah. I don't vex. You don't vex? No, I don't vex. I feel you like that. I don't vex. You don't vex? Give me food. Yeah. Give me, give me food. Food. No, 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 no. That wasn't for food, man. Yeah, what do you mean? That wasn't for food. Never vex you, please. Yeah. Never vex you for anything. No, it wasn't for food. <laughs> But folks, anyway, those were the kind of games we played in school, you know, as little boys. Uh, it was wonderful. Things have changed a little bit now, you know. But I'm sure my partner know about those games. That's why you wonder what never vexed me now. Uh, well, we we'll have to break dinner. Let me break it. Let me break. Let me, let me break. Let me break. Yeah. We we'll almost freezing set. I prefer freeze. Yeah, freeze. So, boy, you give back my phone, right? Back. Right. Yeah. Back. So, we go, we, we go in freeze. Okay. We go freeze. So, folks, join us this Friday. Free. On... <laughs> Raise it high up the ladder. Let me set it on fire. A little more calypso.
Can you spend wisely and have more savings? Yes, you can. Learn more with Money Matters on GBN Television. The Money Matters series explores 12 top ways to save money. In this series, you would learn how to save by setting up your spending money right. Save on vehicle loans, home improvement projects, your credit cards, and even on prescription drugs. Tune in every Tuesday morning at 7.15 for Money Matters, a lighthearted conversation with financial planner Tali Francis. Follow the rebroadcast on Thursdays at 6.50 p.m. and on Sundays at 7.30 p.m. Money Matters is a financial literacy public awareness program sponsored by Republic Bank Grenada. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Hey folks, you're invited to tune in to Grenada Music to the World program hosted by Eugene Gittens on Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Classic Radio 105.5, 105.9, Hot FM 98.5, 98.7, GBN TV and all their social media platforms. The only totally local music program in Grenada representing all genres of music. So it's Green's Music to the World on Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on GBN with the music icon himself, Mr. Eugene Gittens. See you then. There's no better way to start your day than with me on Good Morning Grenada. Covering everything you need to start your mornings off right. 6.35 a.m. on weekdays on all GBN platforms. Good Morning Grenada, adding a little blossom to your mornings. GBN Television News at 7, a pulse on all things Grenadian. Look out for our new features through expanded synergies with our media partners in Barbados, St. Lucia, Jamaica, Trinidad and beyond. Capturing the latest in news, sports, weather and entertainment. Credible, informative. Thank you for making us number one. News at 7, live, Monday to Friday on GBN Television, Channel 7 and 11. K105.5 and 105.9, Hot 98.5 and 98.7, GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel, and www.gbn.gd. GBN, with you anywhere and everywhere. Long ago, the strength of Grenadians was in their arms as they worked the lands to get food for the table. Nowadays, most Grenadians' plate is packed with lots of starch and meat, little or no vegetables, plenty fried fruits, and they wash that down with something sweet while sitting in front of screen. Hard work and exercise seem to be out of style, and lifestyle diseases are becoming the fashion of the day and claiming many lives. Let's make a change to live longer. Let us Yo, Carlos. Carlos! We're going up in number one. Start up the boogie, boogie, boogie. Left up the boogie, boogie, boogie. Yo, I blind tell them this. From a rich in the place, we go rev it up with this. We start up the better, rev it up. Start up the better, rev it up. Long past them others, long past them dirty. We start up the better, rev it up. Start up the better, rev it up. Long past them others. From a rich repressing, gas, 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 gas. Welcome back to Good Morning Grenada, 20 and a half minutes after 7 o'clock. Once you're here, race to fetch, you know we're starting to link up with the sister Isles of Karakou and P.T. Martinique. Always a pleasure when we can hear from the people on our sister islands. Good morning, Karakou, P.T. Martinique. Bless up all your whole fantastic cells this morning. Joining me this morning are two um, representatives of the Touching Hearts Foundation. We have President Kamasha Compton and the Vice President Junior McNeil. And they're an organization.
station in Karaku doing great things on the Sister Isle. Good morning, Miss Compton and Mr. McNeil. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning to the listeners and the viewers of GBN. Happy to have you both. Um, so I'm touch, very happy. Touching Ourselves. hearts. Touching hearts. Just um, I've been hearing about the good works that touching touching hearts has been doing on the Sister Isles of Karaku. Uh, before we get into some of the projects that you've undertaken recently, let's start from uh, information on Touching Hearts, how long the organization has been around and what um, prompted the start of this foundation. All right. Uh, um, good morning again. Um, my name is Kamasha Compton, the president and the founder of Touching Hearts. Um, I am pleased to be part of this organization. Um, I did not see it coming, honestly. I did not see this coming. But uh, what actually initiated this uh, was last year um, during the COVID lockdown that we we had our curfew in place and um, we were restricting persons, especially the elderly, from coming into the revenue office to receive their public assistance. Now, I am... Uh, clerk at the um, district revenue office in Karikou and we normally give the public assistance every month end and so um, we were told that we had to go into the field and distribute the, the monies to the persons in their homes and it actually took three days um, it was an experience I can tell you this um, I saw what I did not believed existed and um, I saw hurting hearts I saw um, emotionally distraught um, people that we would have overlooked on a normal basis um, we see people you know walking the streets uh, and in the best maybe the best that they have and uh, with a nice smile on their face uh, and uh, we never know what they are going through in their in their in their homes we never know um, much more than what we are seeing even if you ask them how are you they may pretend and they say i'm fine but they're not fine so when i actually went there and i saw i saw what i saw i i it touched me so much that at the end of the three days, I I believe the Lord spoke to me and um, he said to do something about it, you know? And uh, I spoke to my children about it. I called my aunt because she also has an organization in, in um, Canada um, that helps the needy and the vulnerable there. And um, she said, when the Lord puts something in your heart, don't sit with it, go with it. And so I I prayed about it and I asked the Lord to show me because I can't do this for myself. I need people to assist me. And um, what I did, I I had some names, some, some names came to me who should be part of the organization. And I called... Um, one of the persons who are a member who is a member right now and they said well let's have a meeting and let's discuss and i call um eight of us mr mcneil also one of them and we discussed this uh, initiative and they were all happy to be part of this of this uh, organization and uh, we started discussing, you know, the plans, uh, what 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 we can do. We we look at Karaku and Piji Manik on a whole, and we 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 saw so many things that needs addressing, and we believe that touching hearts um, can address or can help to address some of the issues and to to help um, bring hope and bring courage to the, the, the hearts of many who are in need. 
So in an organization that is just about a year old or so, how are you able to do all the things that you want to do in terms of getting the assistance and the support, whether it's from business communities, um, you know, organizations, governments, to fund the projects that you want to undertake in helping the residents of Caracol and PG Martinique? Actually, I could say it's it's been challenging so far, but um, we were able to maneuver a lot of things. Uh, first of all, we got our our foundation um, registered. The name is registered, and that was a challenge in itself. <laughs> but with God's grace, we got over it, and um, we have our our accounts that we set up at the cooperative bank um, and we would have gotten some food supplies from my the same aunt in canada she sent a couple of barrels already and we have distributed to um, persons that we have on our list that we consider to be part of, uh, to be that uh, in the needy program. Um, we have worked, or we are working, I should say, with gender affairs and social de development, and they are helping us to, um, well, they're guiding us with the list that they have also. And we are working with that, but we're not dependent on that list because we ourselves have to do our search. We have to ensure that um, the person that they that they have on their list meets the requirements. Because I'm telling you, there are persons on the list who should not be on the list. So um, there are times when the barrel came and. Because I want to cover, I don't want it to limit to a small amount because the the, the list is, is large. Eh? So I would say uh, roughly we, we covered 30, 30 families. But with the help of our local business people and um, um, ordinary persons, um, walk, walking in the street, I would ask them, I would say to them, um, we're, we have an organization here in Karakul um, called Touching Hearts, and I would explain that I am seeking assistance, financial assistance to assist with um, purchasing uh, food, food uh, items to give out to some families, and they would gladly give. They would gladly give. They, I'm telling you, this this has been the best because I would have sought um, contributions for other things, and you know, it's not it's not uh, that uh, what I should say food coming as 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 um, as you would like, as you would like. But with touching hearts, anytime I said to provide for the poor and the needy. Mm. People love that. People love that. And especially those who have been there, who would have grown up in that um, state and they have not come out of it, they understand. And they, they, they could relate. And so they are willing to, to assist. Now, we our, our aim is to target retirees abroad, those in the, in the diaspora, um, companies um, um, out there, and uh, uh, other uh, donators who, who are willing to assist in, in, in our ventures. We are also um, embarking on um, raising funds. Now, we are not, uh, um, what I should say, we do not have a, a, a social media platform yet. We are trying to organize that. And we also want to launch. But uh, we, 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 have a, we have a challenge right now in, in um, obtaining an, an office um, in Hillsborough. I, honestly, I have squared the entire village looking for a place to, to have our meetings. 
um, but so far nothing yet i've also put out an ad um, on the facebook platform also i sent uh, an ad to through spice morning gbn spice morning and they said they did put it out uh, and um I got some feedbacks, but then I'm not hearing anything again, and I'm wondering what what went wrong because I tried getting touch, getting in touch with those who would have um, touch base with me and tell me yes they have something and they'll see what they can do, and I cannot get hold of them at all. So we're still waiting, and we are having our we are hosting our meetings um, at. Uh, uh, somebody else's space right now but it's not ours and um, we, we want to have our own we want when we launch that we have our place where people can come to us and um, you know there is a specific place that they know that they can come because i don't want them to be coming in my workplace in the government's place that is not that is not the the, the proper thing to do so yes, we, we want to have things in place so that when we launch, we are ready and we're ready to go forward. But we've 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 done a couple of things. Um, we also had our our food venture where we um, Mr. and it was Mr. McNeil's um, proposal since. We had so much in our gardens. The Lord has blessed us with so much in our gardens um, during 2020. And we said, well, let us cook um, food and let us invite all those persons who we would have identified in the different villages and uh, um, call them and let them have something hot, you know, to eat and they were very much appreciative of what we did we're not finished but we we covered about three or four villages already and um, we have held up to sort of work on 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 um, our launching we we want to have things in place because it takes a lot of work also and uh, preparation and um, time taking to do this cooking venture you know so we just want to have some time to set touching hearts um, on the social media page uh, platform and uh, because we need finances we need monies honestly we I can imagine. Or can this we is, move forward? Yeah, this is you this know? would not be a, a a cheap venture that you're undertaking. Like so, I could imagine. Um, but Mr. McNeil, let me bring you in here. Uh, how much of an impact have you seen with the work that Touching Hearts has done over the past year, um, and helping residents in Sist of the Sister Isle of Karakou? Have you seen a difference and the impact that the initiatives have made? Yeah, well, I want to say, um, you know, it is very good to be part of such an organization to be able to uh, reach out, reach out and touch somebody's hand, so to speak, to reach out and and, and really love and meet what is um, genuine need to a neighbor. Um, needs are always there, but during COVID, it became um, highlighted, amalgamated, uh, increased as it were and um when we go to the villages to see the the smile on the family faces the love you know people passing and give commendation or uh express their willingness to support you know it is a bit satisfying so we know we're on the right path because um as the good lord says um the poor you would always have with you but it's not that you don't have them with you uh, but it's what you do about it, knowing that they are there. And so um, engaging with, with Touching Hearts um, creates another platform to to give. You know, I'm, I'm generally a giver, but um, associating with the group, you know, it, it, it gave me a lot of satisfaction. And so uh, I think it's something that we will continue to embark upon. And to say thank you to all those who are supporting us in the business community, um, and to be able to know that 
they are willing, we are pleased. Those on the mainland of Grenada, you would be seeing a letter with a letterhead called Touching Hearts. And now that we are putting it out there, you know that we are not fly by night. We are actually, we have our boots on the ground, you know, and going out there, using the little resources we have and the help to be able to minister to the needs of the people who really appreciate it. What are some of your next plans for Touching Hearts? Um, with all the work you've done over the past year, next few weeks, months, what are some of the things that you're hoping to get done uh, even while you wait for more assistance and more financing? Okay, so we, 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 we plan to, to get the, the launch in, in place. Mm-hmm. And we have already done some homework trying to, to secure secure location. So we would we would redouble our efforts to try and um and create a base or have a base to start, even though small or it's, it might be a place that someone loaned to us, because we will not be able to have as it were um, the rent monies as it were. But we're trusting that some Buddha heart would understand what we're about. And that what we are doing is not um, a one-time thing. We want to go on because yes. the needs of the community will 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 be there, yeah. and we want to give people that that option um, that they can come to us. Um, for instance, we we are working with with um, some individuals who you know um, they are maybe you could consider them homeless. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, you make a move and you, you bring them into a situation and uh, you think you would get the support of the people who, who donated the space, but then some challenges come and, and then that out. The individual get thrown out and, you know, mm-hmm. um, we have to be there supporting them and so forth. So we want to be there like a shoulder to lean on. Yes. That they can yes. call us every time. They can mm-hmm. call us and feel that you know that we have the power to help. Yes. And yeah. So we, we are pleased to be doing that, and we are excited. How can somebody get in touch with the organization? Whether it's um, to be a part of the projects that you're doing or to lend assistance. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, go on, Ms. Kamasha. <laughs> For the time being, um, you can call me. Uh, my number is 416-5246. Uh, we do not have, as, I, as we said earlier, we do not have an office space yet to even have a landline number. But so far, you can use, um, you can call me. Um, you can call Mr. McNeil and um, we can discuss whatever um, plans that you can assist us with. Uh, with the initiatives that you've you've you know you've put out and the way that you've assisted residents on Caraco and PG Martin, are there any plans or a possibility of helping the less fortunate or the needy people on the mainland of Grenada? <laughs> Miss, are oh, you sticking to your people? Yeah. <laughs> sticking to my people, honestly. Yeah. Yes, what we have I, too much here. We have it. We have it a lot here, and I don't. Uh, no, we have to look <laughs> at our own first. I believe we have to to make sure that our family here is all right first before we can look outside. Because <laughs> no, it's too much here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would like to say that we, we would not want to limit ourselves, you know. We would not want to limit ourselves. Yes, we want to we want to target uh, Caracom Petit Matney, but um, our hearts are big. Our hearts are big, and we have faith in a big God, you know. Yeah. And so we would not want to we would not want donors who are given to us either to 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 be limited by our, our perception of what we can do, you know? Mm-hmm. So if someone's, for instance, businesses in Grenada might think that we have been stingy with our giving, we don't want them to discriminate against us. So we would have to evaluate whatever the needs come up and, and of course, be guided accordingly. 
based yes. on our resources at the time. Yeah. Yes. Um, and like Ms. Compton said, there are a, a few families, a few people in Caracol and PG Martinique that would need assistance. Uh, how do you get the names of the families or the names of the individuals? Is it that people would submit the names to you or you found them yourselves? Um, as I said earlier, um, I am working with, or we are working with um, social development and they're the ones who have gone into the field and, you know, they've done their survey and they have their list that they're working with. Um, that they present to the to the, the government and they are getting assistance, a small assistance every month. So we are guided by that list. So I got the names from that list. But as I said too, um, I am not dependent on it. It's just a guide because I myself have to look and see. Right. Because there are persons on the list, there are persons out there that are not on the list there. Right. There are needy persons there that are not on the list because the list only caters for a, a, a certain limited amount. But um, there are there are others, and people are getting themselves into into situations all the time because today you might be all right, and tomorrow um, something happens and it just makes you fall into that category. You didn't plan it; it wasn't planned. But the situation happens, so people are people keep adding to the list, whatever the the, the circumstance. Um, speaking of circumstances, what would you say is the greatest need in Karaku? Is it uh, shelter, clothing, uh, food? Food. Food is the greatest need so far, um, followed by shelter Mr. McNeil you agree yeah I think food is a principal need and um, and um, I should say maybe the ability to to um, to make do maybe they, they may not have fuel you know in, in the house something like that and um, during the dry, dry period maybe they cannot afford a truckload of water okay. so so food and water, depending on the time of the year. Yeah. But now, generally, it's food, of course. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, continue doing the great work Touching Hearts Foundation is doing. Any final thoughts, any final um, appeals you'd like to make as we wrap? Okay. So uh, I, I will say before um, um, the president closes, um, we, are, we, are, we are doing good, as it were, in the community. And... Um, if you have a heart to do good out there and you need a, a medium to channel uh, your goodness, um, maybe you, you want to be noticed or you don't want to be noticed, um, you, can, you, can, you can link up with Touching Hearts and we would we'll happily embrace your efforts to collaborate with you in getting out whatever donations or support you would like uh, to render to the community. Those who are, uh, they really, they are really in need. So we want to appeal for those of you who have a little. It doesn't have to be much. Yeah. A little. You bring your little. This one brings a little. Yeah. And little becomes much. That's right. That That's That's right. Ability. Ms. Compton? Mm -hmm. Well, in a nutshell, Ms. Mamani said it all. And I would um, like to um, say how grateful I am Uh Heartfelt thank you to all those who would have contributed already and uh, who um, not also contributed already, but they're, they're, they're looking forward to contributing time and time again. And um, we are glad uh, for these people. And um, I pray that the Lord blesses them abundantly. And uh, I also want to ask for persons who have plenty who have much and they don't know what to do with it please consider us consider touching hearts our arms our hands are stretched out we need you we cannot do this by ourselves we need you um, and thank you once again 
and very thank much. you thank you both and continue doing what you're doing i know it is going a very long way for the residents of karaku and pt martinique so keep yes. it yes thank you thank you Blessa. thank you enjoy the rest of your wednesday have a good one <laughs> same to you all right Members of the Touching Hearts Foundation, President Ms. Karmasha Compton and Vice President Junior McNeil, we thank them both. Uh, those of you in Karakou, PT Martinique, and on the mainland, I repeat, and on the mainland, I'd like to uh, share with the Touching Hearts Foundation so that they can continue the work that they're doing. You can contact the President Kamasha on 4165246 um, and get in touch with her, see what else they need on the Sister Isles, and let us all do our part to help the people who need it let's take a break and then we're going to come back in a very short while i'm not seeing traffic cameras yet but let's see what happens on the next side of the break this is good morning grenada on classic gbn we will be right back uh, hold on, I'm trying to queue up my song. Slokey, that is where I'm talking. So we will be right back. There's it, you know. Yo, Carlos. We're going up in number one. Start up the boogie, boogie, boogie. Ruby Gas clean, safe, and reliable LPG is the perfect solution for your commercial and everyday needs. For cooking at home or barbecuing, choose Ruby Gas LPG cylinders. Available in a variety of sizes from 20 to 100 pound cylinders. Ruby Gas LPG clean, safe, reliable. Are you cooking with Ruby Gas? Get boobies, get going. Raise it high up the ladder, let we set it on fire. Hey. Let me go never vex. Never vex? Yeah. Yeah, let me go. Ah. You go never vex? Never vex. What, bro? You don't vex? You don't vex? No, I don't vex. I feel you like that. I don't vex. You don't vex? Give me you. Hey. Give me you. Give me you. No, 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 no. That wasn't for food, man. Hey, how do you mean? That wasn't for food. Never vex you, please. Yeah. Never vex you for anything. No, it wasn't for food. Mm -hmm. But folks, anyway, those were the kind of games we played in school, you know, as little boys. Uh, it was wonderful. Things have changed a little bit now, you know. But I'm sure my partner knows about those games. That's why you wonder what never vexed me now. Uh, well, we we'll have to break dinner. Let me break it. Let me break. Let me, let me break. Let me break. Yeah. We are all freezing set. I prefer freeze. Yeah, freeze. So, boy, give back my phone, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Back. So, we go, we, we go in freeze. Okay. We go freeze. So, folks, join us this Friday. Free. On <laughs> Raise it high up the ladder. Let me set it on fire. A little more calypso. Forget the funk and the disco. Can you spend wisely and have more savings? Yes, you can. Learn more with Money Matters on GBN Television. The Money Matters series explores 12 top ways to save money. In this series, you would learn how to save by setting up your spending money right. Save on vehicle loans, home improvement projects, your credit cards, and even on prescription drugs. Tune in every Tuesday morning at 7.15 for Money Matters, a lighthearted conversation with financial planner Tali Francis. Follow the rebroadcast on Thursdays at 6.50 p.m. and on Sundays at 7.30 p.m. Money Matters is a financial literacy public awareness program sponsored by Republic Bank Grenada. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. 
Hey folks, you're invited to tune in to Grenada Music to the World program hosted by Eugene Gittens on Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Classic Radio 105.5, 105.9, Hot FM 98.5, 98.7, GBN TV and all their social media platforms. The only totally local music program in Grenada representing all genres of music. So it's Green's Music to the World on Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on GBN with the music icon himself, Mr. Eugene Gittens. See you then. to good morning Grenada it is now hold on there that is eight eight minutes to eight eight to eight that's the time now um there unfortunately we apologize for the absence of traffic cam this morning uh, but don't worry we'll be back up and running next week please a lot it's looking laughing we'll be back up and running next week please a lot with traffic cam uh, monday and wednesday 7 45 a.m on classic and gbn a collaboration with just cool media traffic cam will be back soon 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 time don't watch that don't watch that today don't worry all i can tell you is the traffic cook Coconias outside. As sure as daylight, traffic coconias. Every morning it is coconias. Today is a day before a holiday. I'm sure it's still coconias outside. So be be prepared for delays in traffic cam. Hold on, wait. Let me make up a piece of traffic. I repeat, I'm making it up. So when all they go outside and all they see differently, don't say blossom say. Those of you coming into town, the carnage, there is traffic. It is flowing smoothly, but you expect a little delay. Most likely you'll be going uh, slower than you planned, at a snail's pace almost, but it is flowing on the carnage. Those of you on Melville Street area, River Road heading into the Melville Street area, traffic will be at a standstill for a short while. It's always tight by that area, coming by in front of the stadium, Melville Street, River Road. If you can have avoid the city do that if you can head up symmetry hill or even make an about turn with Finn river road and make an about turn up um maras hill and then by this so feel free to do that because it's going to be coconuts heading into town i know the traffic outside lucas street all in traffic and no all is stand up in traffic every morning no matter the morning every morning traffic is usually backed up in front of lucas street so those of you coming down from st paul's mardi gras area expect some delays in the traffic a picture in it there now the traffic heading up lucas street so set up all yourself right if you can come in through archibald avenue most likely you might meet a little traffic jam because um the traffic on it real tight for a two-way traffic inside archibald avenue area inside by this up so be prepared for some delays in traffic whichever part of the country you are traffic <laughs> just expect delays and we'll all be fine all right let's now get ready for the bbc we're going to end the visual or the televised portion of good morning grenada at this point thank you so much tomorrow god willing it is corpus christi holiday which aka planting day um, a notice or information published by the ministry of agriculture advised of planting days the planting days t tomorrow the third up until the fifth um, according to the ministry of agriculture those are the days that you can prepare your land or that's good day to prepare your land planting day it's a good planting day on the seventh the seventh of june is a good planting day for us so maybe not tomorrow please a lot so just prepare the land prepare the lot of land whether it's just by the window or in the garden prepare it tomorrow please a lot for good planting day on the seventh don't say blossom didn't try to help all you all right enjoy yes local us walking with a sister bless up your old long you master control as well could mean a dog at time so let me go so today's the third so it's cut hay or do plowing on barren days that's today tomorrow god willing and friday sixth and seventh good days for transplanting and good days for planting root crops aka tubers aka the dashing and the tanya the yam them kind of 
guys by this is a good day to plan them on the sixth and the seventh god willing i'm here to help so set up all yourself those of you who are planting cut and plow on today tomorrow and friday uh saturday sunday transplant and plant root crops and it the third no the third is tomorrow please a lot right so the pl transplanting and planting root crops sunday and monday please a lot set up all yourself right i'm here to help all right that's the good planting days for the very first week of june especially as we get ready for planting day or corpus christi tomorrow please the lord right now let's prepare for the bbc's 8 a.m newscast enjoy the rest of your wednesday everybody bye d bye all right i done bye <laughs>